This is Sal here with famous IndyCar driver, driver <laughs> smiling when I said famous, so J.R. Hildebrand. And since you're here, I thought I would ask a question that, that's always been on my mind. Yeah, we sure. have a picture here of, 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 the, of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah. Uh, and, and I've always wondered, you know, how you, it seems like turning is a very important part of the, it is absolutely <laughs> an important part of what we're doing. Of, of the People get fixated on the car going straight, but the turning part turning is pretty seems important. To be where a lot yeah. of the skill uh, yeah. com comes into it. And, and I've always wondered, you know, what is, what is optimal? Do y'all try to minimize your distance and kind of take the turn as, as quickly as, or as in as short of a distance as possible by kind of really hugging the hugging the corner by going like that or but when you do that you have to kind of you have to turn more there's more g-forces there's more mm -hmm. uh kind of centripetal force that you that that, that your your tires have to deal with that the yep. human has to deal with uh versus versus taking the outside where you have to cover more distance but the the centripetal acceleration the g-forces aren't going to be as dramatic so so how do you think about that well, every track ends up being a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we, when we take Indianapolis here as the example, if you're all the way on the inside, you know, it's like the 800 meter runners kind of path. It's the yeah. shortest distance. You can kind of get from point A to point B. The lap is the same every time. So it doesn't actually depend on you running a specific distance or not. Um, for us in this example, the car actually just won't do that. You know, if you think about being all the way on the inside, being all the way on the inside through the corner and then exiting all the way on the inside, it's having to do the most work mm -hmm. to follow that path. Um, and in Indianapolis, we're approaching turn one at upwards of 240 miles per hour. Wow. And that okay. turn one so is it's not, it's, it's hardly banked. It looks quite flat in person. So as opposed to, you know, NASCAR running at uh, Talladega or Daytona, these big giant super speedways, mm -hmm. The car is having to do quite a lot of work to get through the corner here. So how do you, so do you take the outside or is it? Well, so then, you know, you look at that and I think if you, if you noted sort of the radius that we like, mm -hmm. if you full, if you drew a full circle out of the, out of each of those arcs. Okay, so let's do that. So let's say yeah. this is the shortest distance path. This is kind of a circle that looks something like my best. Let me scroll over a little bit so that we can see it a little bit better. So this would be a circle like this. If you were to keep that arc. Right, going it would be a circle that looks something like this. And so that's we, a pretty that's a pretty small circle. It's a small in the circle. Big scheme of things here, yeah. And for the larger one, the circle would look something like, would look something like this. Right. So you have a larger radius, a larger turning radius. So you would have to have less centripetal acceleration, inward acceleration, and less fewer g forces on this outside one. Right. The larger so, the circle is. In a different way to look at it, if you looked at the car trying to just go around these two different circles, yeah. and it's going to be going the same speed on either one, it's doing a lot less work to get around this outside circle. And therefore, the speed that you could carry around that then sort of goes up. You know, right. the car has a limited ability to stick to the racetrack. So, so I mean, that, I think opening that's an, that up definitely makes a But that's an important here. point. At least in Indianapolis, you're full throttle the entire way. Yeah, So when exactly. you're saying, I mean, obviously, if you hit the brakes, the car could do what you know uh, yeah. a, a very small that's, turning that's a good radius. point yeah but but you're you're a full throttle i mean you're, you're not you're not gonna have any chance if you at all let off the gas that's right when you qualify at indianapolis you've got to put in four laps four of your best laps of the season of your career in an indianapolis to qualify um and that you will f are absolutely flat chat the whole way around the racetrack there's no lifting there's no right. braking and so that's why you're saying no, the no, car no. just wouldn't do that if you're going all out the car just wouldn't even be able to make this this exactly so from a driver's that's a good point from the driver's perspective you have to stay flat out if you're going to go fast. If you're going to set a lap time that's relevant, right. you have to be able to stay flat out. And so at that point, then you're searching for the line around the racetrack that you can do that most efficiently. Right. And so then in this example, moving that, increasing that radius by going from the from our green circle out to the purple circle does that rather effectively. I see. Or going from the purple to the green back to like, so you're saying like this. Well, yeah. And so then to find the oh. actual optimal line, what we end up doing is starting out on the outside of the track, mm -hmm. then bending the car into the inside of the track and going back to the outside of the track, really using all of the road that's available to us. Right. So, so that's interesting. So, you know, when I, I posed the question, it was kind of like I was, my brain was just looking at these two circles, but right. you realize there's a, a bigger circle that you could fit here, that there's an arc like this. And this would be, you know, if you imagine this would be a part of a circle that's way huger than even that even that purple circle that we're drawing. Yeah. The turning so radius, the center of that circle is like here or something. Right. So you have a lot less centripetal acceleration that you have to place, inward acceleration that you have to place on the car. Exactly. And therefore, the car is able to carry 
a, a massively increased level of speed through the corner, and that that's that's really what we're looking for. You know, you consider. I think it's it's a very interesting. When I, when I think about what I'm doing as the driver, I don't think I really am consciously thinking that much about the the mathematics that go into finding this optimal racing line. You sort of instinctually just gravitate towards what the car feels like it wants to do. Right. Um, but when we look at it from this perspective, you know, you've got the car going down the straightaway here. It's at, at 240 miles per hour. That's almost as fast as the car is going to go. So it's just this sort of terminal velocity uh, the drag of the air hitting the car won't allow it right. to go the, much the faster. The engine's giving all the power it can. Yeah, you're absolutely and that's flat just out. offsetting the drag of the, so you can't accelerate. Exactly. It's point. almost like you're hitting a Top wall speed, of air right, at that right. point. You're not going to be able to accelerate any faster. And so what you're really trying to do is you're trying to, in order to set that fastest lap time, which ends up equating to the like highest average speed around the lap that's right. what's the lowest number in terms of a lap time perspective you're trying to get the car to most efficiently get through the corners so that right. you can allow it to accelerate down the straights right. as much as you can you're sort of getting it to diverge from this intended course that it's going on here as efficiently as you can and so by creating the largest radius around the corner that's how we end up finding that optimal line that's fascinating